What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and in continuing my series of Disney movie reviews I'm here to let you know that Tarzan is no perfect movie. And I think the majority of you probably know a little bit of the story. Tarzan is an orphan human raised by apes. But one day he comes across a group of human explorers and meets one of them, Jane Porter played by Minnie Driver. And he becomes fascinated by the things about human culture that she teaches him, which makes him feel conflicted over discovering his roots or protecting his tribe of gorillas when Jane's tour guide Clayton keeps pressuring him to show them the tribe. This is considered to be the final movie in the Disney Renaissance, and that's mostly because it was the last one for a while to be a super huge hit. It made over $400 million at, at the box office, and from Emperor's New Groove to Home on the Range, which was kind of the final period where hand-drawn films were mainstream at Disney, they were mostly original concepts, except for Treasure Planet, and they were largely either bombs or minor hits at best. So, needless to say, things didn't feel the same for a while after Tarzan, but if this was indeed the last movie in the Renaissance, it was a pretty good one to go out on. This was, at that point in time, Disney's most expensive animated movie, and probably the most expensive animated movie in the world at that point. At $130 million, they were combining 2D hand-drawn characters with 3D backgrounds of these huge, sweeping jungles, but it's blended together so seamlessly that you wouldn't even notice. And there are so many times where Tarzan is just gliding through a never-ending onslaught of trees, branches, vines, and you get POVs of him swinging and surfing through so many different angles to the point where it was so fast and fluid that my jaw was on the floor the entire time. This is some of the best animation Disney's ever put on screen. And the action set pieces are surprisingly darker and a little more intense, but not to the point where it wouldn't be entertaining. They use more suspenseful techniques as opposed to fight choreography to get us more invested, like putting frames within a frame to emphasize something important and to raise the stakes, or to have characters before a fight take a few seconds, look around, see what's out there before something pops out, which usually is a cheap tactic to use a jump scare like that, but because it's the jungle, everything surrounding you is hiding something about to attack, it actually makes it earned. The movie's also not afraid to portray death without getting too specific in the details because when we do find out what happens to Tarzan's parents, all you see are their legs and some red cheetah footprints and that's really all you need to establish what happened. And that's another great thing that the animation does in this movie. It establishes what the characters are feeling through their vivid expressions even without dialogue because for the first 10 minutes outside of the opening song the characters don't say a single word but we get these combined backstories of Tarzan's family and the gorilla tribe how they share some common ground over experiencing family tragedy and how it leads to this mother figure Kala who's played very well by going close to adopt Tarzan it's all blended together in a way that's so visual and so easy to identify with and easy to get emotionally invested in, and that's one of the best things an animated movie can do. Now, let's get on to the music in this movie. This is by definition not a musical because Disney knew for a fact that a half-naked man in a loincloth breaking into song would look unbelievably stupid. So, because things worked out so well on Lion King with Elton John, they hired Phil Collins to write and sing songs that basically narrate what happens during the montages in this movie. And, personally, I really like these songs. Lyric-wise, they're not the greatest. In fact, they're a little too simple sometimes. And Collins has flat-out said that some of these songs were written after improv sessions and after, like, his first impressions of the script. So... Maybe he was being a little too hasty with writing the words. I'm not entirely sure. If you've heard any Phil Collins songs, you know that they're, it's the music that makes you listen, not the lyrics. But that's the great thing about the songs in this movie. It's the music. It's how catchy the rhythm is and how much the percussion especially really stands out in the music because Phil Collins is a drummer. You can really feel the beats of each instrument as they play, especially during Son of Man, which has a really catchy beat to it. And my personal favorite song in the movie, Trash in the Camp. That's right, it's completely pointless, but 
it was just such a fun sequence seeing these characters use whatever they can to make music and riff off of each other. It was really fun. It made you feel like you were a kid again. I will admit, though, you'll be in my heart I wouldn't call an Oscar contender, and if you're going to ask me if the South Park guys should have won for Blaine Canada, yeah, yeah, they probably should have. Tony Goldwyn does a pretty good voiceover performance as Tarzan. Whenever he has to make his lines sound primitive and imitate ape noises, he finds a way to make it sound natural and not come across as being silly, which is a really hard thing to accomplish. I liked the bond that he had between him and his mother Kala, who's played very well by Glenn Close. She has a good way of helping him try to come to terms with the fact that even though he doesn't look like the other apes, he can still contribute to the tribe. He can still do a lot to make them happy and respect him. And that was probably the strongest emotional bond in the movie. And I like the fact that he is an upbeat and playful person, but whenever his tribe needs him to be strong, he can switch into the strong silent type in an instant and he'll do whatever it takes to survive he doesn't enjoy killing but if he has to he absolutely would mini driver as jane brings this feisty energy to her that makes her a lot of fun to watch but also a lot of curiosity and passion because she's in africa to study gorillas it's the thing that really makes her happy in life researching other animals learning new things about them and that First for knowledge is kind of the common ground that she has with Tarzan when he when he discovers her and he wants to learn more about other people like him for the first time in his life. And you can feel how that's a genuine, a quick but genuine bond between the two of them. But you can also understand the rough patches between the two of them because she wants to meet the gorillas, but he's concerned that if she does, there will be dangerous consequences. And that was... It wasn't one of the most fleshed out relationships, but it was an easy one to understand. Nigel Hawthorne is in this movie to basically do what he did in The Black Cauldron, which is do a lot of forced slapstick that doesn't really land. I, I, I give it that he's less annoying and more likable in terms of personality, but he really doesn't get to do a ton. Clayton was a pretty boring villain. In fact, he's only like this much high above Radcliffe and Pocahontas, and that's mostly because Brian Blessed does give him a suave enough voice, and he does have a design that basically makes him look like evil Clark Gable. That's apparently what the designers were going for. And weirdly enough, Brian Blessed is the actual guy who does the Tarzan yell, because Tony Goldwyn couldn't do it, so they got Blessed of all people, who actually does sound like him when he does the yell, but that's honestly the closest thing to being interesting about Clayton and I'm not kidding when I say this I actually kind of forgot that Rosie O'Donnell and Wayne Knight were the comic relief in this movie because they're in the beginning as kids but not for a ton and then when they do trash in the camp which is like their big moment to shine they kind of take a backseat to the humans as Tarzan spends more time with them which obviously was the point as Tarzan gets more curious about humans like him he's obviously going to start ignoring his family but O'Donnell and Knight didn't really get that many opportunities to be funny let alone contribute to the story and because there's a script there was more potential for the two of those actors to be funny but the big problem with Tarzan is that his moral dilemma between being faithful to humans or being apes didn't always make sense throughout the majority of the movie he's doing everything he can to please his father Kerchak who bears a lot of unspoken hatred to him for reasons other than being human. It involves his backstory that I can't spoil, but obviously when they're kids, Tarzan does, does everything he can to please him, and that just causes more trouble, and you definitely understand those parts. But when he's an adult, there comes a point where the two of them fight once Clayton is a little bit threatening towards the gorilla tribe, and you're supposed to feel ashamed of Tarzan after the fight, but... Honestly, I wasn't. I get that he gave away their tribe's location to Clayton, but at the same time, he also brought the good humans and the apes together peacefully, which was a good moment. I get that Clayton started the fight, but Kerchak's just as blindly ignorant and kind of discriminatory as he is, so I didn't really understand where the tension was supposed to be. I get that Tarzan came close to killing Kerchak and he's killed animals with human weapons like a, like a homemade spear, but that was to protect, 
to protect the tribe. So I'm not entirely sure where the you're just as bad as them analogy was supposed to be. And there are other moments like that where it's not really clear what the message is supposed to be in those moments. And it's what makes Tarzan as a movie not as focused in terms of the characters, the story and their dilemmas as it could have been. But when the story is focused and when the characters are fleshed out and likable, there's a lot to be entertained by. The animation is fantastic and it enhances the storytelling in so many ways. The music is enjoyable. It's really basic, but it's pretty enjoyable. And Tarzan and Jane are really likable characters. They're interesting. You want to watch them all the time. And for all those reasons, I was glad that revisiting Tarzan was a huge success. I'm going to give Tarzan a 4 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen Tarzan, do let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for more Disney reviews, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.